Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Muhammad Shahbaz. I'm from Pakistan. I am PhD in general surgery and also a specialist uh, in robotic surgery and minimal access surgery from ICAD France. Today, I'm going to talk about the health corridor and uh, the uh, belt or road health corridor, medical device innovation and connectivity via telemedicine. I have been uh, affiliated with these institutions and I have been working in different institutions and I'm today going to represent College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan and uh, I'm going to give my presentation uh, about the health corridor. What are the implications of health corridor? Uh, as everybody know that China and Pakistan are iron brothers. And I have written widely on Belt and Road uh, Initiative, the different ideas. Uh, what uh, is the health corridor? How the Belt and Road uh, the Initiative, we can convert it into the, the health corridor. As everybody know that uh, this uh, between China and Pakistan, there is a China-Pakistan economic corridor. And uh, my concept is a little different. I think that we should uh, have more opportunities in the healthcare sectors uh, for the cooperation between the one belt one road countries. So this is the, the data of uh, College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan. Uh, CPSP is the top ranked uh, postgraduate training institute in Pakistan. Till now, it has trained more than 33,000 specialist doctor in Pakistan and also 22,000 are the, the fellows of the college and 9,000 are the, the members of the college. And uh, they are registered trainees, the number, and here you can see the accredited hospital, which are accredited by the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan. Not only in Pakistan, but also overseas hospital have also been accredited and recognized by the CPSP. Uh, also, we have uh, more than uh, 14 over uh, 14 training centers in Pakistan and also four abroad. There is the main idea of uh, Belt and Road uh, Health Corridor. Uh, here you can see the the main idea of health uh, the Belt and Road countries. The, here you can see the land route and also uh, the sea route. And Pakistan have the China Pakistan Economic Corridor. So my idea about the health corridor is that Belt and Road countries should establish regional healthcare centers. The main idea is to establish the regional healthcare centers in each country and connect these regional healthcare centers via telemedicine and via mobile hospitals. So here is the idea of regional healthcare center. It can consist of, but not limited to, the hospitals and the IT and big data and the medical universities, advanced training centers nursing and paramedical institutes and the central research and development and entrepreneurship centers and also medical device and innovation centers these all can be connected by the mobile hospitals and telemedicine this is the main concept of the health corridor and these uh, regional healthcare centers can be established along the belt and road countries so why why there is a need of health corridor as you know that in the recent times there have been a lot of challenges faced by the humanity especially the covid-19 and there's a different ebola outbreak and there's cancer hiv and one country cannot single handedly uh, overcome the situation so we need a cooperation we need a cooperation and communication uh, between different countries as there is the data of pakistan the number of doctors, uh, you can see the registered doctors are about 233,000 doctors. Till now, the one bed is available for around 1,600 patients. 1,000 patients uh, have access to only one doctor. So there is a need to increase the, the training of the doctors. There is a need to establish more medical universities, hospitals, and uh, so we can overcome the lack of uh, healthcare facilities and also collaborate between different countries. Here you can see the, the data of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, the Gwadar Port projects, uh, which are also include $100 million hospital at the Gwadar. And the exports of Pakistan are booming, and Pakistan is the number seventh country by the number of uh, scientists and uh, the engineers uh, Pakistan is producing. And there, there's the healthcare data of uh, China. Here you can see there's the China has about a, 8 million health workers, which is a big number, and then has 400,000 general surgeons and 800,000 surgeons. The registered nurses are about 6 million, and there is a need to also cooperate with one belt, one road countries 
especially Pakistan and China can join hands and uh, they can cooperate. So these are the China medical pharmaceutical industry, the, and the sales in uh, 2002. Also the robotics and there were about uh, 383 robots in Asia and China have uh, about uh, 46 robots, uh, the Thawinju robots. So this is the healthcare expenditure of uh, China on healthcare and pharma industry. Here you can see the China is spending a lot of money on the healthcare and the number is increasing and the total sales of China pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry you can see is rising and the increase of 18.5%. So this is the number of foreign students studying in China and the, the, the biggest number of students come from Asia, then is Africa and Europe and America and Oceania. And the, the number of student by country here, you can see that the number of student, number one in ranked is the South Korea. We sent about 50,000 students to China. And uh, uh, number two is Thailand. Pakistan comes on number three, 28,000 students. So these students, when they go back to their countries, they need uh, to be trained and uh, they also need to be adjusted in the local industry and in the local hospitals and uh, they need to be find the jobs. So if there is a health corridor, so these students, uh, they can easily get the job and they, as they understand Chinese, so they can um, decrease the, the cultural barrier and the language barrier between Pakistan and China. It's an important role for the collaboration between China Medical University and King Edward Medical University. They were declared at the sister universities in October 2018. You can see that also the, the signing ceremony and the Cardiology Association of China having cooperation with uh, Kyrgyzstan establishment of center and also you can see the a delegate of CPSP is visiting the Lancet Mayo International Clinic and a delegate of the China Medical University uh, headed by the party secretary Mr. Chu Jinhai went to Pakistan last year in April. There is a collaboration between uh, Weifang People's Hospital and CPSP and also the collaboration between Lancet Mayo International Clinic and CPSP and different institutes. And you can see it also uh, the, the CPSP has been involved in a various project with these countries, with these universities. The mostly is the establishment of uh, uh, One Belt, One Road Training Center uh, for the students' training programs, which are, which are being uh, conducted at various levels, undergraduate level and postgraduate level. So, one Belt, One Road, or CPEC ke samaraz ap nazar aane lage. Shobai Tib ki dunia experience nahi ईदा and also the last year we had the design of medical uh, devices conferences in Shanghai I participated and Professor Tan Yang had the idea of establishing a Belt and Road Medical Device and Innovation uh, and Application Alliance. So this is a great day today that this, uh, this uh, on your inauguration and establishment of uh, this uh, alliance today and uh, I would like to congratulate all the and the members and the chairman of this uh, the, the council board. So uh, also the Sinopark joint lab was established in Xi'an Jiaotong University last year. The establishment of joint venture it was to combat the antimicrobial resistance and uh, to increase the training and the research training between uh, Pakistan and China. Uh, so these are also different traditional Chinese medicine uh, trials that have been conducted in Pakistan. So one of the famous uh, trial is the capsules of chronic bronchitis and it's a yin huang qing fei which were uh, conducted trial in pakistan was approved by the fda so pakistan uh, domestically engineered its first uh, ventilator this year and uh, it was uh, made by a number of uh, organization and also pakistan engineering council played a vital role in engineering of this uh, ventilator so this year also uh, yesterday is uh, 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 the Pakistan China technical training uh, course for traditional Chinese medicine was uh, organized and this is the first time that this kind of training course is being organized between China and Pakistan. So Pakistani students have the opportunity to learn the basic and advanced uh, 
training of traditional Chinese medicine by this course. About distant care so of telemedicine. telemedicine and telemedicine. In areas with local shortages, important. when care is needed, the when there is no medical professional device around that location, so the we need help. In the and with the help of great can, digital solutions, we can we provide the telemedicine for hours wait for hours to find out what their date So Professor Jack Marasco right is the president of the uh, ACAD. He performed the first, this doctor is first uh, telesurgery in 2001. He was sitting in uh, New York uh, while the patient was uh, sitting in France. He operated on patients successfully and uh, was the first surgeon to perform the telesurgery. So the, uh, we need also need the advanced operating rooms and then diagnostic labs in the one belt one road health corridor. These uh, advanced operating rooms and diagnostic labs uh, should be uh, included in the state of the art hospitals uh, across the across the belt and road and in the regional healthcare centers. Here you can see the 3D technology is being used for the diagnosis of the uh, the patients. So the, we also need to include big data in this uh, one by one. When Watson goes to work in a particular role. field, it learns the language, the, telemedicine, the jargon, it will help and for the, the telemedicine and also for the diagnosis, the precise cancer, diagnosis of There are many the different types of cancer, and each type disease. has different. Or seven is nanotechnology. So in the future, they will, they will be, be able to, to uh, deliver the drugs to the actual the places, the I mean cells. In, in a targeted way, uh, in cancer, now the decision to eradicate the range of side effects we have heard. Fourth, in nanorobots, we could detect signs, early signs of disease. It could put prevention to an absolutely new state, new level. You see the to medical equipment, then the now we can print out biomaterials such as liver tissues. With so also we have this uh, of most ink advanced uh, uh, and 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 cells. Imagine using brain uh, imaging to improve our cognitive skills from memory to attention or problem solving. Making us real life cyborgs, augmenting so we are using a lot of sensors, uh, which will lead to serious and So, what are the challenges faced by the One Belt One Road Health Corridor? The main challenge of the health and health corridor, and also for the Belt and Road Initiative, is the language barrier. Also, there is a lot of anti Belt and Road propaganda is going on. We also need to combat this uh, and there are some new government, new project, whenever the new government comes, it cancels the previous projects and starts their own projects. In recent times, there is a more government to government uh, uh, cooperation. So we need to promote people to people cooperation. Also, there's different medical systems between different countries. So we need to have one belt, one road countries uh, join hands together to establish uh, the joint curriculum and also we need to diminish the cultural barrier between different countries. And what are the recommendations? So we need to establish uh, the mobile medical facilities and mobile hospitals across the Belt and Road countries. And also after the COVID-19, there is a more need to establish the Belt and Road Medical Force, which can have uh, the doctors, uh, nurses, paramedical staff, and armed forces and uh, speed response forces. All they should be connected with the telemedicine and uh, with the mobile hospitals advanced technology. There is also need to have this Belt and Road Health Forum, which should be established as soon as possible. And we need to have a multidisciplinary link between different uh, organization. And uh, this uh, platform is a great platform. By making this alliance, uh, I would like to say congratulations to the organizers. And I'm looking forward uh, for more multidisciplinary link uh, among the different countries in the future. So the summary, I would like to say that uh, the health corridor is very important uh, for the the regional uh, regional countries and also we need to have more cooperation in the healthcare sector to have this uh, research and development and medical device and innovation also we need to have the doctor and the medical staff exchange programs and international communication and project cooperation and advanced surgical skill training uh, especially in the field of robotic and laparoscopic surgery the accreditation and the inclusion of already established uh, hospitals in the Belt and Road Initiative. Medical remote uh, training and regional cooperation of disease control is very important. 
and the TCM and regional local herb and medicine and regional and the research and development cooperation is very important and also for the migrant medical care uh, which is very important everybody have a nice day and uh, thank you very much